I'm Joe, KA4 WJB. I have a direction finding antenna. This is a two meter antenna. Two quarter wave verticals, one quarter wave apart. It has a sharp null pattern that uh, I mark here. I look for a null in the direction finding. And as you swing it around, you have a sharp knoll when you're looking for it. These are uh, ground planes, quarter wave ground planes. I uh, made them out of uh, tape measure and PVC tubing. And I uh, made them so when they're going to fold up and do the battle jumping out of a vehicle. But I've also made them out of uh, uh, strip wood and and uh, coat hanger. So, there it is. How much did it cost, Joe? Uh, just a few bucks. But it's the uh, price of a tape measure, it's a pipe, and a little bit of coax in between. Very good. All right, thank you. Great. Okay. All right, this is uh, David Rocky. N4 WQF, and this is a uh, TDOA antenna that I built. I got the uh, board from Fur Circuits, and the parts are just standard parts that you can buy at any parts store. The uh, idea of this antenna is to uh, measure the time at which the signal reaches each antenna, and when it reaches them at the exact same time, uh, it'll be quiet on your radio. If it's slightly off, if you turn it, you'll start to get a tone one way or the other, which will let you know that you're not aiming toward the antenna. Now the downside to this antenna is that you really can't, there's one thing you can't determine, is it forward from you or is it behind you? So you have to use some uh, directional techniques of finding that in order to resolve the problems with this antenna, but as far as uh, getting a pinpoint direction, these antennas are very accurate. And how much did it cost? Uh, the cost was about maybe fifteen dollars. Very good. Seven dollars well, for the board, and then just little parts. How long did it take you to put it together? Um, three weeks. No, if you, if I did it all at one time, it would probably take about three to four hours. Okay. Uh, David Rocky, N4WQF again. Uh, now we have uh, a Yagi antenna we use for fox hunting. This could be built real cheaply. Um, it's made out of tape measures, and the nice thing about the tape measures is when you're fox hunting, you can always, um, you know, if you hit something, these will bounce right back. I mean, it's uh, it's probably a very durable type antenna. You can carry along extra radials if you need to. Um, PVC pipe for the center. The total cost of this thing, again, might be about $15 and a couple of hours to put it together. Um, very directional, nice for hunting. You can uh, turn it the way you want to and and uh, find the, the direction of the fox and then head in that direction. Um, another good thing with this is when you head and get a heading on it, if you have a compass, you can have a compass here and you get a heading and then map it and draw lines on a map and triangulate location in order to find out where the uh, fox is. Um, this does work very well for transmitting as well as receiving. If you need a good portable Yagi antenna for, you know, low watt usage but very good distance, this is a good antenna to use. Um, like I say, there's very little to it other than a PVC, um, tape measure, some coax cable, and some hose clamps, and that's about it. Now there's another one you can use that's very simple to this. It's a two element version of the same thing. Lighter in weight, does the same thing. The gain is not quite so good. Um, Costs a little bit less than the three element, of course. But uh, bottom line is very functional for both fox hunting and using your antenna for uh, transmitting if you want to. If you need a, a distance away from a repeater and you need to point toward the repeater, good antenna to use. Very good. Thank you, Dave. Hello guys, I'm KB4FUZ, Robert. We have uh, <clears throat> different types of attenuators that we use for our radio direction finding. Small types like this, which, which uh, this can be had from 
car circuits. It's an ARRL project. It takes a couple hours to build. Very inexpensive, probably $10, $15 worth of parts. Or you can use other types that you can find surplus. I picked this up. It's uh, got 80 dB of attenuation, but it was very inexpensive with a hand bust. Um, we have any type of handheld will do, small or large. What is very important is finding ways to secure your handhelds so that you don't drop them because it becomes very cumbersome sometimes when you're operating. So you can get a simple lanyard, hold it, you're holding your antenna, possibly some type of belt clip for your attenuator so you can hands-free operation. Also, UHF or dual band handhelds are very helpful in the sense that you can use uh, the third harmonic of the original frequency to uh, give you a uh, much more de uh, desirable attenuation. And that's a uh, simple overview of some of our equipment. Very good. Thanks, Robert. Okay, we've got a small little fox in the tree that's right there right here in the parking lot and Joe KA4WJB will demonstrate his in-fire array in producing a null. Uh, what do you see right now Joe? I see on the high end I see four bars. I'm going to swing around to the null and get practically nothing on the S meter. So I don't see anything, any signal there. Okay now I see signal. Okay, I see four bars it looks like, five bars, and you null it out, and you're pointing right at it. Okay, that is the in-fire array. Very good. Thanks, Joe. Sure. All right, I've got David here now, going to show the two-element Yagi, and we still have the fox planted in that tree right there. It's a little miniature transmitter, and he's using a step attenuator, and... You can see the signal strength on his uh, radio here. I'm going to try to zoom in just a little bit. Can you see that? Okay, so he's got some signal. Go ahead and put some null into it there, Dave. Or uh, attenuation into it. That pretty okay, much he's got pretty much took, took it all out now. See, see how that signal came back? Oops, sorry. See how that signal came back there? Very good. Now move that antenna to the side just a little bit. Okay, and back to it. The signal gets stronger there. And weaker there. Very good. Alright, that's a step attenuator. Thanks, Dave. Okay, Ken, KJ4CTZ here again, and I've got a little 4 megahertz offset attenuator that's right here that Joe's going to demonstrate with his in-fire array. You see how close he is right there to the actual Fox transmitter, and right now he is on the high gain side. Can you see the, uh, no, stay on the high gain side there, Joe. And let's see the signal strength here. I think you should be able to see that. It's full strength. And now go ahead and turn that uh, antenna around there slowly, Joe. And let's see if we can see the signal strength in the antenna at the same time. And it pretty much just nulls right out. This is the benefit of an offset attenuator where no RF can get into the radio. It's actually shifted by 4 megahertz into the radio so that you could really adjust it with a pot right here a linear taper pot for for great knowing man that's awesome all right thanks joe